Welcome to Spiritual Rockstar Podcast, where world-changing spiritual entrepreneurs come to deeply awaken the power within to bring forth their greatest purpose, to create massive awakened impact for millions of souls around the planet, while enjoying being in tune with all life and real wealth in all aspects of their lives. I'm your host, Daniel John Hanneman. to Spiritual Rockstar Podcast. I am so grateful to be with you today. I'm grateful to talk to you about uh, channeling Jesus and my journey with Jesus and also to share channeling with you from Jesus, from the energy of Jesus. Do you want to meditate and make money? Let it be simple. Let it be easy. Let it be fun. Go to yoursacredpurpose.com and get your free meditate, make money meditation today. For those of you that are wondering, Am I saying it's this physicalized Jesus who walked the earth or some other sort of Jesus version that you know we may have a conception of? It's just this energy of Jesus that we all feel in our own beautiful and expansive universal way for those that are connected with that energy. I'll be channeling that energy to help you to deepen in your heart and deepen your awakening as part of this broadcast on this podcast today, all right? I wanted to share my journey with Jesus with you so that perhaps for those of you that resonate with uh, Jesus and his work and his transmission, that perhaps you could find your own story or your own connection, your own path with the energy of Jesus. So for me, I was born and raised into a family where we were with the Lutheran religion and the first house that I remember being in, uh, I was in a different house for, at first in my life, but the first house I remember being in across the street was a Lutheran church. So right there, it was right there. And I always felt like in retrospect in my life that that was a sign to me that I was to devote myself to spirituality. And so I had that church there and, you know, I was enrolled in Bible school and all that, whatever, all those type of things and did all the, all the, all the things. So as far as that goes, but I did not do a lot of attending church because my parents, although they would go on holidays, like Easter, Christmas, I think that was about it. Um, and then maybe a service here and there, we didn't really go regularly. And to the point, and it bothered me ultimately to a point to where even as a child, as a young person, I decided at times that I'm going to go to church anyway. I want to go to church. And so I'd find myself going to church services by myself. And back then, you know, it was right across the street. There was just, it was like a field between where I was and where the church was. And I just walked across that field. I'd be right at the church and uh, go right in and it was you know not a mega church but it wasn't a teeny tiny church it was a decent you know a decently attended church that just has grown over the years as far as i know i don't know where they're at today i haven't gone back most recently but anyway i'll go there and i would take in a church service now it didn't happen that often i probably could count on one hand the amount of times i actually went on my own but i just thought it was interesting that given today's culture, especially that I would actually want to go to church on my own. It wasn't lots of times, but it had happened. Mm-hmm. And also in those journeys to the church, one of my early journeys to church on my way back home, after taking in this beautiful energy, by the way, I'll tell you this story in a moment. First, I want to tell you about my story about being in that church. Being in the church as a kid, I would just feel this incredible spiritual energy of being at the church, while at the same time being acutely aware that there was there was teachings and ideas and concepts being brought to us that were not the truth. I I, I don't know if I would have like verbalized it that way at that time, but I but I just knew like is that just that knower inside me? I just knew where truth was and where truth did not seem to reside. So. I don't know if I ever believed, believed, I always had the, I had the concept and understood the concept and played with the concept as a kid. All right, there's heaven and hell. You either need to believe uh, to be able to go to heaven. If you don't, you go to hell. And 
I think even as a child, I really, I mean, I never really bought into that idea. And, and so, but there's all that beautiful spiritual energy, you know, at church. So that's what I was really grooving with. So anyway, now that I get to my story, one, one time when I was coming back either from a church service or maybe it was Bible, a Bible class or something. I don't know what it was. I don't remember, but I remember starting to walk back home and there was snow on the ground. I live in the Chicago area and I was walking back through that field. And as I took each step, I became aware of the sense of pre a presence by me. And so I, I looked next to me and I saw um, prints going into the snow right next to me. And there were prints that made me have the feeling of like the devil or something like that. And they're like, almost like paw prints or something like they, I didn't know what it was. Now you'd say child's imagination. It wasn't real, but I don't think so. There's something real or true about it. And so I had this sense that this devil or this energy was there and it was trying to get me somehow. And so I remember running home and at first, as I looked back, I noticed uh, it was tracking with me. And then I just let go, I just focused on getting home and then I just let go of the whole thing. That's a very memorable moment in my life. Um, and so I don't know, you know, what that was all about. I do know that I feel as a child, I, you know, have this sense of as we do as children often, we have the sense of innocence and connection and love. And yeah, you know, as the years go by, we get more concepts, more judgments, more whatever. And we experience more of a sense of separation from source for many of us. Now, that's not everybody's path, but I think to some degree, maybe it is, right? So for most of us, I think we accumulate ideas and concepts you know, over the years, uh, over the decades of our lives, and and we have those to unpack. And that's why a lot of people, as they get older, whether it's in their 20s, 30s, 40s, or 50s, or beyond, they start getting into personal development and spiritual work. I have to unpack all these ideas I've taken on through the programming, through education, our parents, society, culture, etc. So I have this connection with with God, with Jesus in part as well at the church, because what's at the center of all, to some degree, was always Jesus. Now, it wasn't a Jesus church, so to speak, where like everything's about Jesus completely. Like it was not that type of church. Like some churches really are. They just say Jesus about everything, right? Jesus is Jesus that. Jesus is your only salvation. Um Definitely was some of that, but it wasn't as, you know, as strong on that as some churches I've seen. So I was really, you know, felt this real connection with that energy, but I, I didn't make anything of it at the time. I just figured that's what everybody feels, right? Of course, everybody feels connection to Jesus that's in such a teaching. So I just kind of noticed that at that time. And then I'll fast forward my story because otherwise it'll be like all these stories for my whole lifetime. I always felt this connection with source, with a, a deeper power within. And I always felt as a kid that um, I'm going to fast forward in a moment here that, the, you know, this kingdom of heaven on earth is already here. I was intimately connected to that as a kid. I really was. I had this just this feeling of, you know, like, why, why aren't people loving each other? Why are people... Um, at odds with each other why are there these issues you know as a as a child and we we don't get it right we don't get it why should these things even exist and the kids have the right you know <laughs> the kids are you know if you're not being traumatized every day and abused like you probably have a clear maybe clear access to that um i definitely had a good childhood in that regard i didn't have that sort of thing going on and so i just but I just always wonder, like, I, I didn't get it. You know, I didn't get this life that continued, you know, for a long time. I mean, um, maybe throughout my life to some degree, but, um, you know, as I became a teenager, just, yeah, just felt like there's a spiritual thing going on with me. I want to be, 
a spiritual leader was an idea in my mind um, that came through to me. I uh, wrote something on a chalkboard once and about God and everybody was like, whoa, that was so powerful. And so I knew there was a transmission. Out of all the things in high school, there was not hardly anything that was ever noteworthy that I was doing in, in high school because I wasn't a scholastic person. I wasn't invested in the school system and then studying. So when I, that one moment is the one moment that I can remember from high school where there was actually some real attention on me specifically as a person at school, at school itself, um, by more than one person. Like that, and it, it, honestly, like that was it. Like it was very, the only thing that I can remember anyway. And um, with the sense of like, wow, you know? And so that, that, that's, that stayed with me. And, um, you know, I, I wasn't going to church anymore. I, you know, as a, rebelling teenager just leave it at that for now you know went to school I was just trying to find my way with anxiety depression etc and everything and got into uh creative writing and 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 then eventually psychology in college what became and got into copier sales I've told this story at least towards many times but I got into copier sales to get out of my shell because I really was like screw everything then I'm like okay then all right I need to get through my my nonsense so and I feel sales has something for me I'm going to be selling something in the future and I want to get good at it was the idea at the time so got into sales you know then went back to school got my master's in clinical psychology now during this whole journey there was no formal spiritual path there wasn't even an informal spiritual path in terms of like me studying or meditating or doing any of these things whatsoever like none of that was going on none of it was going on so um but i was in the personal development i was listening to les browns the brian tracy's the tony robbins those sorts of things i was dipping into that for sure at that time when i was in sales for example and then so it was on the psychological personal development track and then, uh, you know, seeing some therapists because I had issues and psychiatrists and all that stuff. So I had that path. Anyway, so as uh, I got into mental health and helping the chronically mentally ill, again, you know, like there's no formal spirituality going up first. Then all of a sudden I became into science of mind, went to science of mind churches. And without getting that whole big story, otherwise this gets to be a long episode, is I had an experience at a workshop we had at our church after I'd become a practitioner of science of mind and been a church leader and, you know, all kinds of things. People telling me I could take over the church and because of my energy, it was strong and I, my enthusiasm and the way I spoke, et cetera. Anyway, um, eventually at one of the churches, this wasn't, you know, that, that, there was one church where that was happening. Then I went to another church and again, I was, I was actually seen as a threat, like at that church, like, oh my God, you know, you, you know, we don't want you to take over. So the minister would be telling me things like, calm down, like, you know, but wanted to use me and, and at the same time to to benefit the church and and things like that. So that's my story about that. But um, anyway, I digress. So I had an experience. We did a rebirth um, re with the breathing, you know, the breathing uh, process rebirthing so we did one of those workshops and during that workshop like you know was my my next real encounter in depth with Jesus because I don't know it was like a 40 minute process I felt like I, I don't remember how long it took but it was it was whatever it was in depth it felt in depth and the whole entire time I was doing the rebirthing process all I could feel was the energy of Jesus the entire time like like maybe not right in the very first second, but like once I started getting into it the entire time, it was all Jesus energy. And so when I came out of it, I had questions. I was like, why did I feel like, like maybe I was Jesus in a past life? Like that, like that's how strong it was. And so, you know, I was into, uh, at the time I was having a private practice and counseling and doing hypnotherapy um, and hypnosis and so I was in that world with hypnosis. So I knew somebody did past life regressions. Um, 
with hypnosis and was very interested in people that had walked with Jesus during his lifetime. So, so anyway, I did a, a past life regression with her, her and um, what came through the regression anyway was that, you know, I was a disciple, you know, and so my middle name is John, right? So, so there you go. Like that, you know, is the character that I showed up as in a past life. Now, past lives and the specific characters that we were like, like there might be lots of people that say they were this the same disciple the same lifetime and there's all those concepts but you know i've had even recently like i went to a, an event and someone said yeah i don't know i'm picking up on your past life stuff and it looks like you were with jesus and like so it's been confirmed many times like that there's something to it for sure so anyway um and i went back to the time when you know when he he rose uh there's a lot of stories about that you know i understand like some people say there's a trap door i've had friends on my podcast even say that there's a trap door and he 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 went off and he lived for many years beyond that he didn't actually die it was in a physical still and i don't know but my experience in the past life progression is that you know there was this him rising and he came back and um he was there with us in a, in a in a circle outside of the you know the cave or whatever you know that that he, he had been put into so um so i don't know what the truth is i just share my experience i don't tell people i know for a hundred million percent usually have not much of anything but um not too many things anyway so so all i know is that you know that made sense on a confirmed like it wasn't like I was this fragment of Jesus or the second coming of Jesus or some, but you know, whatever kind of idea like that. So anyway, so I got to understand why I felt so close to him. And then um, I wasn't, again, I wasn't looking for this. Like it just came to me, like um, no conscious awareness of, of, of seeking this. Like it started with the rebirth and there it was, you know? So, yeah, from there, I mean, yes, I got into uh, just to to make it a little shorter, like I got into healing work and got online as a coach and all that and energy scanning and, you know, learning that this specific technique of tuning into people and um, being potent and direct and, and reading people and, and working with their energy. And then... Um, along the way like I, I again i didn't put much emphasis on jesus or even channeling him that much in the beginning like i was channeling gandhi a lot in the beginning when i started channeling i did uh, at some point i just trusted like i could just tune in the energies and channel i can read all kind of energy i can just let it then i could just tune into stuff and let it speak through me so i did that with gandhi i shared that with the world back in the 2000s i did some of that and uh probably some other sharing i don't remember everything i've been a, 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 a career here um since i got started in 2006 and uh so but jesus was in the mix you know he was in the mix at the time i seem to remember and then for sure and then um but then i just you know i i didn't do a whole lot with that and then over the years, what happened as I developed an academy for invincible healers, which is amazing, just helping healers to claim their gifts, get clients, learn the energy scanning technique that I teach. Um, I was guided to do programs with Jesus. And, you know, and I, and, and I started channeling, obviously, Jesus on, a, on the regular. So, so I did that. I, I did, a, did two different year-long programs. Um, one was heal with Jesus. One was heal like Jesus, and um, and yeah, I mean it was just it was it was awesome to do. But I was doing it in tandem with with all the other work at the time. And then you know recently, like I've continued to channel with Jesus here and there, um, but not that much. And then what came to me this year is it actually came through my sister. So if you're listening, thank you, sister. <laughs> um she was like hey you know i don't know i feel like you've lost your way in a sense and 
so um she started talking about jesus and like i feel like you know like she was it was divine intervention and she bottom line is she reawoken me to the energy of jesus and how you know i'm a representation for that because i would do these retreats with jesus too and and one of them i remember saying like I just, you know, we we're talking about the work I was doing there and the work I do overall. It just came out of my mouth. Like I wasn't consciously thinking about it. I was like, I just hope that, you know, I'm not killed someday for the work I do with Jesus. And this is so many years ago. So, you know, for many years, like I've been out here as different characters in a way, right? So I come out, I'm an intuitive business coach. I do spiritual work. I'm a healer. I do this, I do that, right? And so I don't even know, like, if you've known me for over the years, like, all the different ways you've seen me and identified with me. But, you know, at my core, really, what I have been resisting, I came to understand. And by the time this is aired, like, you know, I'll be, you'll be seeing me more and more on stages and, and making offerings around this. But I've always been a spiritual guide, a spiritual teacher um, at my core, as we all are in our own way. But I am... I always knew I was meant to be a spiritual leader. Um, you know, I would say since high school, like that transmission came in in high school is really clear to me at that time, like, like really consciously clear the transmission, but I just, I just blew it off. I just, you know, I just never, never I, okay. Cause I always thought like that meant to become a reverend or things like that. And, and then I always wondered, can I make money doing this, et cetera. So you know, it just came to, into fruition, like whatever all my blocks were, which I won't get into today because I want to get to the channeling today. Maybe this can help you just to say this for today, though, is I got to a point where I just felt like I'm not, I agreed with what my sister said. And I'm like, that night, I believe it was, yeah, I'm pretty sure that night, like I just, is that night or shortly after I just said, whatever I'm really like, I got so sincere and I was so true. I just like, whatever it is, God, that you want me to do. Um, like there's one thing to say it and not be completely sincere and completely surrender to it. And it's another, another to be in that place. And we can't always manufacture that. Like, right. But I was just in a very sincere room. I says, whatever it is you want me to do, I don't care what it is anymore. I just don't feel everything's just right. Like I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. And then by the next morning in meditation, it came to me that I'm here to be a divine transmission of awakening to people. And part of that is definitely squarely with the energy of Jesus. So I wanted to just share my journey with you with Jesus so that, again, you could maybe reflect on your own journey. There's many people channeling Jesus. There's many people um, feel this intimacy with the, uh, the energy of Jesus, right? Um, and, and I channel other energies, Mother Mary, Mary Magdalene, you know, um, you know, I'm all about that balance, you know, uh, the idea, I feel Jesus is a great representation of balance, masculine and feminine energy, you know, all the sense of war between the masculine and feminine, it's, it's to be a little wild and, I could see Jesus in, in, in some people's mind as being like part of the patriarchy. I've heard people say, you know, Jesus needs to come down because that's white supremacy or, or something. Like Jesus wasn't even white. It's just the representation we were given um, from Europeans, right? Um, the best depiction of Jesus I've ever seen was not even just brown skin, like probably like how he looked. Um, and like, you know, that's darker complexion you know kind of skin um but that you know was actually one where it was very you know almost like fully black you know darker black almost like like a dark dark brown i would say not black though um and i was like that i like really really um spoke to me and and i still like even behind my shoulder over here if you look at a video that is a picture of jesus and it's hard to see what his skin color is there. It doesn't matter, right? But I don't know. But my point is, is um, within all this sense of 
you know, concepts, divide, divide, division. Um, for those of us who are connected to Jesus, it's getting in that Christ energy. What is the, what is the Christ? Again, just the basics. Like it's our oneness with God in our in our heart and our soul and our spirit and the fullness of who we are. Like that sense of oneness, you know, and the love that Jesus represents. Um, that's what it's about. Because increasingly, it's like all these ideas about your life, you you know, you, oh, don't you want to be a billionaire? Don't you want to be this? Don't you want to be that? Like all these identities. But the truth is, is, you know, we are love. We are far more than any of these identities that are, are, are we sell to ourselves and then therefore culture sells to us. Um, we're far more than that. And so just coming back to if you want any, even anything close to an identity, it's like, um, you know, you know, to dismantle that the identities is just to come back to, to sources, love, God's love. You know, I don't care what words we want to use, but uh, Jesus is love, whatever. Because who was Jesus? Great question, right? I don't have an absolute answer for you. His energy can tell you it doesn't matter, you know, ultimately, like, it's all beliefs, right? Like, oh, well, he said he was this. The Bible says this. This other thing, this other book says that, you know, blah, blah, blah. I believe this. They're all just ideas. We don't know. But we do know the energy of Jesus. We can feel that. And so through this channeling I'm going to do, I want to bring you back to that and have you soak in. Um its message, his message, you know, um, because it's not about the gender that he was. I mean, I just want to dismantle that too. It's about the energy he represents. And, and for me, I'm just guided and I'm just connected with his balanced energy because it's important for my path of masculine and feminine and just his transmission overall of love. There's other of you that are more Mary Magdalene, Mother Mary or something else. That's great. I think you should do your thing, right? So anyway, um, thanks for listening. And I do want to give you this uh, transmission, this energy from Jesus. And, um, you know, if you want to receive more of that, just check me out on all my social media. I don't know how much of this I'll be doing on this particular podcast, um, but you'll be able to check me out at yoursacredpurpose.com, get on my email list and You'll, you know, there are going to definitely be a lot of messages uh, coming through there. And then, yeah, that's probably the best way. And then on all my social media, there'll be more and more messages coming from Jesus. And who knows what else? Because I'm just starting once again. There's also the Heal Like Jesus uh, TV channel that's up right now. I don't know if we'll what we'll do with that going forward. It has some messages from Jesus and some teachings I did with Jesus on that channel. So you might check that out as well. And uh, as we have more to share with you on all this, I'll let you know. I also have a program that just came out working with Jesus because it hasn't launched yet. I'm not going to, you know, as the time of this recording, I'm not going to say what the name of it is or anything specific. But if you resonate with this podcast and with the energy that's coming through, you know, feel free to reach out to me because the kingdom of heaven on earth is already here as is, 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 has been translated to us in so many different ways. And what if instead of looking at a world like, oh my God, we're divided, there's wars, that's that's the world we live in. What if it's the world we live in much more so is heaven on earth, as I believe. It is heaven on earth. And when we come back in that space, like Jesus is going to support us with here briefly in a moment, as we allow Jesus to allow us to come back in that space, we know already like what's happening within is shows up in in a, in the experience of our world increasingly, right? There will always be the stories of war, rumors of war, as they say, right? There will always be the stories, and you'll be able to find evidence that those things are happening. You'll be able to find real on the ground things happening where that doesn't look like heaven on earth. But heaven on earth still exists 
within it all. And so when we awaken to this truth, as we live from this truth, we have the opportunity to be liberated individually and collectively, and we have the ability to experience, you know, what Jesus talked about, letting everything be added on to you, you know, to let the, the treasures of life to be added on to you on the material plane, on the material plane, because all of those things in a way don't, do not matter. What really matters is the connection, the love. Yet those things become available with such ease, such grace, and such profound riches if it is what you truly desire. And if it would, you know, serve love in your life, whatever the things are that you say you want will happen. But realizing heavens are on earth with, with or without them, right? Like, it's the most basic way I can put it, right? So I think we really, there's a lot of talking about presence and connection with God. The only way for you to experience the, the depth and the, the true wonders of your being is to be with this energy um, that I'm pointing to through Jesus. That's the only liberation that you really have, ultimately, true liberation. Ultimate liberation is within that space. Now, it's not through Jesus, whatever. But like that's an op is this an opportunity for you, and whatever it is that brings you in that transcendence, and realizing our sovereignty and our power within that—that that it's not about you know what AI can do to us or what the world is doing to us, because that's still the, just the world out there. Well, they could be like us, AI and everything. Guys, they no AI can be like us you know, in terms of the depth of who we really are. No AI can be that. We can't manufacture that. You can't. It, it can't. You can't manufacture that. And if you were able to manufacture it, it, you would be working with a substance itself to create that. And you wouldn't be the one creating it. It would be, it would still be God sent. <laughs> um, so I don't know how else to say it. Um, but there's nothing to fear, you know, that, it, it, there's not something to fear there's 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 just more presence that wants to come through you know so when we feel fearful it's just like wow we need to get connected up more right and that is our salvation because that's the one true thing that always matters and that will always be true until like jesus says until the end of time okay all right and so there's a lot of metaphors um, they come through a lot of times with these channelings. So go with the metaphor and know your own truth from that metaphor. So I'm going to channel Jesus just briefly, like I like I said, um, I did promise to channel Jesus today. So we're going to do that now, just briefly, and um, enjoy. All right, so here we go. Get connected. And I'm going to do some humming noises, vocal toning uh, to enter in, and then um, the energy of Jesus will speak through me. Uh... Welcome. Millions of teachers have descended upon the earth. which you are one. You are instructed by my Father in heaven, by the Holy Spirit, by the womb of all creation, itself. Receive the treasures of heaven on earth within your heart. Know the effortless path to more grace and ease and joy are in the midst of any Conflict. Mm. 
when you come back to resting on your knees in reverence for life, all is set right once again. For that which you give your presence to strengthens but wants to truly come alive within you right now by devoting yourself to God, to the infinite source. More love is available. more opportunity to come back home. Realizing the rich treasures lie within you that are beyond all comprehension, that are beyond any creation of your mind. Or there is more magic within this connection than there are stars, grains of sand, or anything your mind can conceive. For your connection with this infinite presence itself is generated at all, completely effortlessly. The mind that conjoles, that plans and plots as though it's a chess match, your very life. Finds its demise is the checkmates always inevitable? And then you awaken. You awaken to the wonders of your heart. Clear in your intention to serve. the hundreds, the thousands, or even millions of souls. It all matters. Treasure and revel in the joys of the source within. Play and delight in the deep waters of the love that you are. Frolic and play till the end of time. The true awakened being that you are is already here today. Come back home. Play and create the treasures in your heart. You know you are already whole. Release the concepts of the past. They lie to you. They bully you. They poke, they prod, and they mislead. When you know this love, you are set free. Come back home.
infinite love, peace, and blessings. Share your gifts of your heart deeply and profoundly each day. No magic and wonders beyond the conceptions of your mind. Know your holiness. All my love. Goodbye for now. Namaste. Thanks, everybody. If you just want to sit with that for a while, these uh, transmissions uh, are strong and profound for many. Yeah. So I appreciate you tuning in today. Like I said, if you just want to sit in this for a while, please do so. Know, know as you allow this energy to continue to flow through you and walk in this energy, so much more love and everything you truly desire is already here as a result. Okay, all my love to you. And as, as I always say on this show, keep on tuning in. We'll keep on rocking it here at Spiritual Rockstar Podcast. Goodbye for now. The Spiritual Rockstar Podcast. Stay tuned for our next upcoming new episodes each Wednesday and Saturday. Please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review to help us to serve you best. As a reminder, you can get your free Meditate and Make Money meditation at www.yoursacredpurpose.com to rock your sacred purpose. Goodbye for now, everybody.